Hey guys, Major Dodo here, and welcome to a, another Pinups of Death Kingdom Death Assembly Guide. So in today's one for part three, we're going to be doing well the simplest and quickest of the Pinups of Death models, and that is the Pinup White Speaker. However, she's definitely one of the ones I was looking forward to. Um, I've painted up the standard White Speaker and really enjoyed it, so I'm hoping she is going to be just as fun to paint. So let's get started. Um, first off to note is there's only six pieces on the sprue. That's how simple this is. And as always, seemingly with Kingdom Death, detachable boobies. But yeah, I guess that's their thing. Alrighty, so first off, we're going to clip parts from the sprue. Now I'm just using the uh, Citadel clippers I have here. Obviously, you can use whichever clippers you want. I find generally brand new; these things are pretty great. And they 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 work fine. These still cut really nicely, despite the amount of punishment I've put them through. Um, just carefully making sure to avoid. Now, I don't like first off that they're put the connection points, although this side, it's hard to tell as much. Looks like the detail is flattened off somewhat if I zoom, zoom in in a second. I'm just examining the cut marks, but in general, they have put them in the middle of the fur, which is not desirable at all, since as you smooth those out, it's going to... Um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's going to risk smoothing down the fur itself. And the other thing I've noticed is that on this model, it's got some of the uh, detail warping that a few of these models are pretty bad for, which is where detail, I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see, where the detail has been stretched. I get the focus right. The detail kind of gets stretched. So it looks fine like here, but then you start to go around to the side. If you don't drop it, that is and you find that it's all flattened out, or these details, instead of you know, continuing fur texture all the way around, have just been stretched to the sides. So that's it doesn't actually look like skin, like you would find on a fur. It just looks like this fur has been stretched out, which is kind of disappointing. Um, I run into the same thing on the uh, on a few of the models, the biggest one for me was the Butcher, where all of the lanterns were kind of stretched out along the sides, and it was not very pleasant. It was kind of disappointing. I would be interested to see whether the same thing happened on the resin one for that, and if it was just a problem with the plastics, but... So we'll get the other pieces out, of course. They won't just sit there and warble on. I have to excuse me a little bit today. I've got a bit of the sniffles, but got to get the content out to the peoples. And I know you guys are always looking forward to more assembly guides. Besides, as always, if there are any crackles and everything, I'll probably be redoing the audio later when we add in the bells and whistles. But I figure getting the video out as soon as possible is going to be the priority for now for Patreon. Alright, so the main piece, the largest piece, has the leg, torso, and arm. So I'm going to clean that up since this is going to be kind of the basis for the rest of the pieces to stick to. So I'm going to carefully go in with my knife. Obviously, for safety purposes, don't do what I do. For convenience purposes, I'm not judging. Um, so along her thigh here, there's a mold line. You want to be careful with this as you don't want to flatten the thigh. It's probably a bit hard to see on camera, but if I bring it in a bit, apologies, I am just recording this with my streaming camera for now. There we go, you can see that nasty mold line. So you want to be careful when you're cleaning that up. You can see I've done one half already, uh, that you don't flatten out that thigh. So gently scraping with the knife is a, 
is a good plan. You don't want to kind of cut like I was doing with the foot, where you're just slicing chunks off, because that's going to end up with a really munted thigh. However, it, it like that said, it may be necessary to do that. I hope not. But obviously, if you do, you've got to be very careful. Going from the opposite direction will help uh, as well. Catch any. So I'm going to have to go in, but I'm going to go almost like very gently and just kind of let the knife catch on anything as opposed to, to pressing the knife in. Now one of the things, tools you can use here, um, there are several uh, abrasive papers you can get which are often used by Gumpla assemblies. Um, I've got some somewhere which I may dig out when I go back to refinish this model and do a proper, a th more comprehensive guide to techniques you can use on your model and tools, but uh, just a knife is your generally all you're gonna need. The abrasive papers can be pretty good though. If, you're, if you've got a rounded surface that you wanna smooth down, you can hit that whole thing and it comes in a variety of grits. Just cleaning up on this side as well. As before, you want to be careful you don't score the skin or get rid of any of that detail. <laughs> Looks like the line goes up under her arm. It's the downside of having a model that's basically, you know, 90% naked is that any blemishes and everything are going to show up on the skin since that's generally a very pale color and it's something that you will also generally want perfectly smooth whereas if they're wearing pants especially like leather pants and stuff you can kind of pass off a lot of that as your know, damage to the cloak damage to the clothing or texture in the clothing but i find it's a lot more difficult to do on skin it's one of the challenges with skin especially, is trying to keep your surfaces nice and smooth. Obviously real skin isn't like that, but yeah. This is Kingdom Death anyway. It's not like real life standards are in force here when it comes to women. All right, so that's those mold lines. I'm gonna do, yeah, that one's pretty good. Just gonna do a little more of a check. Now something to note here is that this isn't fire. This is blood. If you're not familiar with the Kingdom Death universe, the White Speakers, which this model is technically part of, are a cult, and the White Speakers themselves use hemomancy. I don't know if all of them do, but in the law, in terms of law, that is blood. Hemomancy is basically, uh, well, blood magic, to use the fancy term for it. All right, I think we've got all of that. So I guess next up we'll go with her leg, as always. Dry fit, clean, dry fit, and then glue. So her feet, I've got this weird pose. I'm not a fan of that already. Um, the the posing for the feet for these models, it's just in general, they try, I know they're doing it to make the models look more, um, I don't know, dynamic, but to me, it doesn't leave a lot of anchor points on the models for like in terms of practicality so you want to be careful when you're cleaning this cut mark on the leg as any extra you cut off from here will increase any gaps that come with joining it conversely of course if you don't clean it you will get a small gap as the uh, excess plastic forces the two pieces apart but generally if you're using plastic cement and you do a good job cleaning it, you don't take too much away, you're not gonna have a lot of work cleaning up gaps as the plastic cement will melt and fuse the two pieces together. So that looks like this piece is pretty good for mold lines, not a lot, just gonna give it a light scrape to, to clean things up. 
Uh, again, as I said, always dry fit, dry fit, dry fit, dry fit. Dry fit like a million times. And when in doubt, dry fit again. So I know whenever I don't, I always make mistakes. All right, this looks pretty good. We're gonna have a little bit of a standout on the buckle um, as that is, well, it's a buckle. It's gonna stand out from the strap itself. Otherwise, it's looking pretty good. I have realized though, I haven't got a base to stick her on, which is a little bit of a, there we go. I'll reach over here, grab a spare one. All right, so for this piece, I think I'm gonna go with the extra thin. Now I have the two different adhesives uh, and I have gone over it before, but I will cover it quickly again. The white adhesive is a thicker, slightly goopier, more in standard with your kind of normal plastic adhesives that you're used to. Whereas the green one has a watery consistency. Um, well, not quite water, but it is very, very thin. Um, and it has a much smaller brush applicator. So it is good for fine detail work and areas where you don't want to get a huge amount of glue. And it has a much finer brush applicator. It will of course behave exactly like plastic glue though, in the sense that we'll fuse the pieces together and we'll fill up gaps. That's gone together smoothly. I'm just going to make sure that everything is lining up. Looks fine. We're going to sit her on here. All right, that looks good. I'm going to set that aside to dry for a moment. But basically, I'll bring her up to the camera again. I should remember to start doing this. As a, as all these videos, they are going to get better with time as I work out the um, work through the kinks, work out works best, and this is where the feedback is really important, helping to make sure So I had a bit of a panic moment there. I saw the gap, which was exacerbated by the shadows on camera and um, thought that I had bumped it out of alignment, but there you go. So you can see that the buckles raises out a little bit from the rest of the strap. And then there's the small the kind of crevice there that I'll fill in. But otherwise it's had quite a smooth fit. get the resolution, get the focus back, and we'll go on to the next pieces. But yeah, as I said, there's only six pieces with this kit, which is pretty crazy considering Kingdom Death models. They'll normally find ways to put more and more pieces in, even when you kind of don't really need them. I mean, the argument, like, detachable breasts, man. Like, why? Why, 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 why? That is probably my biggest like head scratching with this with this miniature series with this miniature company. It's just like why are your breasts detachable for like every model? It's because they do they have released models that are just as busty in both plastic and resin that haven't had detachable breasts. All right, so this piece you want to angle it so that the um, just trying to see how to word this so that the you can see the boob basically you can see the, the crack between the two boobs goes to the top and underneath you want to get the, um, the kind of the angled depression and it will match up I mean, I mean it's like there's only two ways you can really try and fit this in so just make sure it matches up before you glue it in but even, as I said though, dry fit, dry fit, dry fit. So I'm just looking, even with all of that, this looks like there's gonna be a little bit of repair work to make sure it, not so much repair work, it doesn't look like any of the straps will match up perfectly with the, the ones on the other side. So I may put a little bit of extra glue, but not a lot. We're just gonna make sure all of that surface is coated. 
and we're going to add in the breasts, making sure, of course, that we put them in the right way around. I'll zoom in again to show you what I'm talking about. You can see along the top where the breasts meet the, um, Jesus, that's a whopping set of knockers when they zoom in that big. But if you look along the top there, you've got the big gap. So that was not from air removing excess, that's just how it's fitted. However, I was careful about putting too much extra glue in because as you can see, there's a lot of scra uh, straps there. And if we put like a big line of extra glue, when we scrape that off, clean that off, we're going to have to be working with that. So this whole area is definitely one of the places I'll be using liquid green stuff to fill in the gaps, but without filling in this detail and to try and meld the straps or meet that all up. Underneath though, the fit looks pretty good. I guess we'll move on to the next piece. So one of the big things uh, with the cloaks often is that they will have a, a fit where they go around, they'll have a loop to go around the neck and then the head holds that on, but it doesn't look like this is the case. It looks like this can be assembled. It looks like it can be done, it can be done with or without the cloak, which is cool. Um, that said, still looks like that I don't know it's like looking at the cloak it feels like there's an additional piece but I, there was no other pieces on the sprue so <laughs> I even triple check just to make sure so we'll go I think we'll go the arm next and then the head so the arm looks like it's a it's a flat join to a flat join there's no directional pegs so that's just going to be a case of gluing it in and making sure it lines up so if you are doing the cloak, you're going to want to make sure that there is room for the arm to line up properly, uh, the cloak to line up properly and not clash with the arm positioning. Although providing you're not like sculpting, like you're not positioning the arm backwards. Ah, okay, so it looks like the arm does have a slight, yeah, so it does have an angle to it. I'll double check. Oh no, it's just that that's it's or oh, the cut is on an angle. So I think for this piece, I'm actually going to use the thicker one because it's uh, on it uh, because it's hanging down. I want to get a stronger bond. Oh. This tub's always more difficult to open. So normally I would use the brush to the surface, but in this case, I'm going to apply the piece to the brush. And that's to control carefully the amount of glue I'm getting on there. And in this case, I'm just dabbing, sorry, it's hard to see, but I'm basically just dabbing it to the brush to get a bit of glue on that surface. Now there is a depression on the side of the arm, which I'll quickly zoom in as the glue does its magic. So it looks like this actually goes behind. Yeah, so it's designed to sit like so, resting on her butt. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see. Now, of course, you could put a little bit of plastic glue on the arm where it's going to touch to the butt for a little bit of added strength, but I'm not sure if I want to fill in that gap quite yet or whether I want it to look more natural like it's resting. Um, I'll have a look when I paint. By the time I get around to priming and painting and stuff, I'll have a better idea of how much that gap is going to stand out just there where the arm meets. But otherwise, just want to make sure that all meets up perfectly. And now we've only got two pieces left. Which is the head and the cloak. Although I'm probably going to leave the cloak separate, especially that it doesn't need to be 
looks like it doesn't need to be glued in as part of the main assembly. It can just go on last, which is actually good because it means we can paint it separately and uh, paint it in a completely different way or just leave it off completely. Personally, I'm a fan of, of more nudity, but so as you can see, it'll just sit. If I could not have massive fingers, looks like it's just going to sit there. All right, so the head will go on top of what is basically, I don't know the word for it. It's almost, it's not a dovetail. It's like a, a half, half, mate, half, my words are horrible today. Love recording it in the evening. But you get the meaning. It's uh, one of the, it's the, probably the most common Kingdom Death join. That's so just going to sit like that and match together. I'll bring it up to the camera, zoom in and show you just to be uh, safe. So that's the join, and then it just sits on like that. So for this one, I think, I think I'm going to go with the white. And the reason for that is that the hair would put the balance of the piece off and I want it to sit perfectly when I'm finished matching everything up. So she does have a, a bit of hair that I'll need to fill it. There's a small... Um, one of the strands of hair that's sculpted in. Let me fix the focus up. There's a small strand of hair that you can see there's a small gap there. Now, when you're gluing that in, if you put a little tiny bit of the plastic glue, that should meld those two bits together. Um, I don't want to undo the head, and I'm going to do that with liquid green stuff to meld that in while I do the rest of the work up there, but that is something, if you want, you can do that with a little bit of plastic glue. That should be fine. Otherwise, we'll go around, you can see the neck, everything lines up. Now the cloak, the last piece, I'll do the, bring this right up so you can see. Apologies for the focus, but if I put it on autofocus, it'll keep shifting. So basically this will just go in and sit like so. It doesn't... Um, as I said, it doesn't seem to have any notches or anything. It just sits like that. However, it's comfortable and then it'll glue on. But it will also obscure access to the entire rear area of the model. So I'm definitely gonna leave that off as a sub-assembly. And uh, I believe a lot of people just leave it off in general as, you know, it's a white speaker. It's some of them have the cloaks. You can do it without. Now to attach it to the base, I'm going to use the white glue since it does have a stronger bond faster. Just carefully getting the bottom of her shoes. Trying not to get it on her toes as that will fuse some of the detail together, which you definitely don't want. Now I'm going to tighten the lid on the green bottle as I've done before, and I'm going to use that as a brace to make sure she is standing up straight. Obviously the pose you know, is leaning to the side, but we wanna make sure that it is lined up basically as it should be. They have some weird poses, I have to say. I mean, they look cool, but it's just like, why would you ever stand like that? I 
Alrighty. So I'm going to bring her in. Bring the camera down, zoom in. And there we go. That is the pinup white speaker all assembled with the cloak left off as a sub assembly so we can get access to the rear of the miniature. Now, when I go back for the second part of this guide, well, the second part of this part of this guide, no, it does take a little bit to make sense, but basically each of these miniatures that I do in the pinups of death guide, I'll be going back and painting them as well for Patreon. Thanks for watching. Uh, join me next time and I'll be doing the pinups of death architect for part four. Thanks.